Hello people of the internet and welcome to the last video in my three part Beast Snagger series. We've painted the Squig Hogs, I've shown you how I painted the boys and therefore the riders of the Squig Hogs and now we're going to be painting the beautifully haired runt herd Zodgrod Wart Snagger. And I'm not going to waste too much time with the intro so let's just get into painting but just before I do I want to say a huge thank you because these last two videos, the Beast Snagger videos, have been very successful, they've been hugely supported. I want to thank everyone that's watched them, all my new subscribers, anyone that's commented and liked and stuff. Continue to do this, share these videos about, and if you want to help the channel more than anything, just watch the whole video. If you watch the whole video, the more time you watch within a video, the more likely YouTube is to um, suggest it to other people. So, yeah, okay, now let's paint that weird dude. So the first thing I'm going to do is the same thing I always do when it comes to my orcs and that is paint the skin. This is arguably my favourite part of the model to paint and it's where I put in most of the effort because it's where I want the attention to be drawn to. Now, I'm not going to cover how I paint the skin because I've already done this. So I'm going to link to that video in the description below and throw a card up in the corner. That's my orc skin painting tutorial. Go check it out. Once we've got all of the skin looking gloriously green and a little unhealthy, we're going to move on to the metallic areas. I'm going to keep it simple and apply a base coat of lead felcher over all of these metallic areas. I'm also going to handpick some areas to use brass scorpion on. There's quite a lot of metallics on this model, so I want to break it up a little bit. I'm going to do the weird little vent looking thing on his gun and a few bits and bobs elsewhere. This video is sponsored by the subscribe button. It's not giving me any money, but if you click it, then one day it might. And, and you get to see my videos. Back to the painting! <laughs> After we're done with that, we're going to go and start blocking in some of the base colours on other areas. And potentially the most important other area in terms of colour on this model is his hair. Now, I'm going to be keeping the general colour scheme of this model in line with the rest of my orcs, but I want to keep the hair as it is in the codex, so that's a nice greyish blue. And to do that, I'm going to base coat it with Cantor Blue. Whilst it's still wet, I'm going to go ahead and work in some Thunderhawk Blue. This is a slightly lighter one, it's starting to head towards a bit of grey. And then when it's dry, I'm going to use a dry brush to apply Fenrisian Grey, and this is a grey with a very blue tint. Now you may be asking why I dry brushed it, and that's because I'm lazy and could not be bothered to do any of the edge highlighting across all this hair. I was trying to be a bit selective where I was applying these highlights, trying to create a halo sort of pattern around the head, because this is where the shine on hair naturally falls. But if you're interested in how to actually paint hair, I'll do a more non-lazy video in the future, just leave a comment. So that's how we do the hair. What about all the clothes? Well, as the trousers aren't really going to be seen, I'm just going to use Black Templar Black, which is a contrast paint. I'm just gonna put that all over the trousers. It will do some light definition by itself. And I'm not gonna bother highlighting it because, I mean, it should be fairly shadowed considering where it is. This guy is quite hunched forward. He's casting shadows all over the shelf, so, you know. For areas such as the weird bit of cloth he's got hanging down the front, and his big satchel-y bag thingy on his back. I'm going to base coat with Rhinox Hide. This is a lovely dark brown. Then on the snake bite symbol and the other bit of cloth hanging down at his back, I'm going to base those with Jacaro Orange. And this is mainly to fit in with my theme of purple and orange. So you don't need to do this. You could either just do exactly what's in the picture or do it to match your colour scheme. Speaking of purple and orange, I am then going to paint his shoulder pad in a Phronician purple, which is my normal base coat for the purple I use. Next thing I'm going to do is start applying some washes, but just before we do, there are the few straps and like bandagey bits and bobs all over the place, like one on his foot, for instance. For some reason, these orcs just 
I haven't got grip, I haven't got to grips with shoes, they keep bandaging their feet rather than turning the feet on. Um, so yeah, go down there, add a leathery brown, which I use more fan brown, it's quite red, I like it. Um, and then we're going to move on to the wash. And straight away, these guys are meant to be hunting and stuff, they're going to be all out and getting dirty. So I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade, or you can use whatever brown wash you like. I'm going to use that all out, well, all the metallics and all the cloths and the armour that I painted. I'm not going to touch the skin or the hair. I want that to stay how it is. Once that's dry, I'm going to go back with another wash on the metallics, and that is Nuln Oil. I want it to look dirty, but I also want it to have that dark, dark look of metal. Metal that looks like it's been used. So we're applying two different washes to this. Now, that's done. We're going to go to the orange areas and start highlighting. For this, I'm going to use Towel Light Ochre. Going to lightly apply this to the snake bite logo, and I'm also going to start to apply it to the bit of cloth hanging behind his back. Now I'm going to edge highlight the edge of that bit of cloth, and instead of trying to highlight big areas, I'm just going to lightly place a dot on each of the lumps that are on this bit of clothy hide sort of thingy majig. I have no idea what this light skin could have come from. What kind of animal has this lumpy ass skin? Who knows? And then as a final highlight on these areas, once again we're going to do the edge highlighting and just a fewer amount of those lumpy spotty things. We're going to use the Shabbaty Bone. That's a really nice finishing highlight for the orange, in my opinion. Now for the brown highlights, I'm kind of sick of introducing new colours. So we're going to use the Shabbaty Bone again and mix it in with the Rhinox side. I'm going to do a 50-50 mix-ish and highlight all the areas. Uh, same applies on the front, that's another lumpy bit of cloth. So edge highlights and the lumps and stuff. And then on the bag, you've got to be a bit more general with it, because it's not as lumpy. And then a final highlight on the leather is going to be more, I'd say 70% the shafty bone, and maybe 30% by the side. So it's a lot lighter. And therefore you use it in much fewer places. Now it's starting to look like this model is coming together a bit. We're going to do the wires uh, on his fodder snapper thingy, whatever it is. He's got two big dangling wires. I'm going to base those. I'm going to base coat those in Avalon Sunset, and then I'm going to wash them with Seraphim Sepia. Once that's dry, I will apply a single highlight of Yule Yellow. There are also some slightly thinner wires dangling across his body, snaky, thingy, midgy. I'm going to base those in my fist on red, give them a wash of. I can't remember what I used, to be quite honest. Doesn't really matter, I just wanted to darken that colour a little bit, so maybe no oil. And then we're going to use Evil Sun Skull, just to do a light highlight on those. Then, of course, you could choose to base this miniature however you like. I had already applied sand and stuff when priming it, so I painted that and applied a few little grass tufts and painted the rim of the base black. I also, for a little bit of spicy fun, went ahead and applied blood for the blood god on the snappy claw thingy and the end of his meat hook that he has on his shoulder. Can only imagine what this guy gets up to. And that's kind of it. I know this video has been a bit shorter and more punchy than usual, but I must say this model was a lot of fun to paint. That hair, man, crazy. Um, I feel like I should have left some of the hair off because it's attached in two parts. I should have realistically uh, primed it all separately and then stuck the front here portion of the hair on afterwards because his face was quite difficult to paint. That being said, I'm really happy with how this turned out and he looks pretty cool alongside all of the grots that I already have painted. So that's it, that's the end of the Beat Snagger series. We are all done. I do have one model from that box that I haven't painted. Um, excluding the boys. Yeah, uh, if you didn't see the thing at the end of my last video, if you if that last video gets 50 likes, I'm going to paint all 50 remaining orc boys in one go. So that's a mix of beast snaggers and normal boys. So uh, if you want to see me suffer, go and hit the thumbs up button on that video. But yeah, where I was going with that was I still have the um, beast snagger knob on Smasher Squig paint. If anybody wants to see me paint this in a video, please let me know in the comments because otherwise I'll probably just paint it separately. And as it's like the boss, almost, 
obviously we're actually getting a war boss on a squig as well. But as it is a higher up squig, I'm going to be painting it in my plan colours of purple and orange. So that's exciting. If you want to see me potentially paint that, not only leave a comment, but make sure to hit that subscribe button because then my videos come up in your feed. You know how YouTube works. So thank you all so much for watching. I will see you next week when I am going to be doing some basing. Completely different. No more walks. Let's have a break. I've done like five walk videos in a row. I'm going to be doing some basing stuff. Uh, yeah, I'll see you for that. So thank you all for watching. Thanks for subscribing, liking, thumbs up and commenting and all that. Uh, links in description below to another video. Socials. Patreon. Yeah. Until next time, I'll see you later. Hello Internet and welcome to the last video in my three-part Beast Snagger series. And today we are going to be painting the wonderfully haired runt herd. Why do I forget his name? Wart Snagger, that dude. Oh, come on. Why do you have to be the end of the... And today we're going to be painting Zod Grod Wartsnagger.